covering the emergency manager and crises and leadership. We know that so-called emergency management has been taking place from the beginning. Where there was an emergency to be managed, people banded together to overcome adversity, regardless of the type of disaster. Whether it was natural, such as the tsunami in the Indian Ocean in 2004, or man-made, but accidental, such as the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster in 2011, or completely intentional, such as the terror attacks of 9-11. People rise up to help others, like this woman helping others to escape the tsunami, or help others survive the radiation exposure that results, or recover from the devastation. It isn't the practice of managing emergencies that is a recent phenomenon, but the role of government in the process and the formalization of the discipline that have caused it to look considerably different than it did than it did just a couple decades ago. FEMA has an interesting um, interactive timeline at the link I've posted right here, uh, you'll see it down here, that shows a number of the events that contributed to the evolution of the office roles and responsibility of the contemporary emergency manager. I encourage you to um, go to that link when you have a couple of minutes. As emergency management took on a more defined role, an official definition for emergency management was established by the International Association of Emergency Managers. You'll notice that emergency, manage emergency management is about systematizing, or as they put it, creating a framework for the purpose of reducing the consequence of disasters and becoming more resilient. The job of the emergency manager is to bring some structure and sense to handling crises so it isn't as bad as it could have been. That said, what is noticeably absent from more evolved and now codified version of contemporary emergency management is an actual definition for the emergency manager. There is no archetype that serves as the model for all nation, state, tribal, or local emergency managers. Some are tasked with fulfilling the duties as a part-time uh, assist assignment along with their regular duties, and others are full-time emergency managers with the staff. Some are situated as a standalone office where others are attached to the fire or maybe the police department. Some carry decision-making authority and others serve solely in an advisory capacity. In any case, the strategic responsibilities and the operational tasks for emergency managers are more clearly outlined than the actual position that they fill. Move on here to crises and leadership. At a minimum, we know that an emergency manager, by definition, is involved in emergencies or crises and management or leadership. Now, according to Merriam-Webster, an emergency is uh, um, an unforeseen combination of circumstances or the resulting state that calls for immediate action. And then we read here in an article in the Leadership Quarterly that a crisis is a situation that threatens high priority goals, which suddenly occurs with little or no response time available. In the book, The Politics of Crisis Management, it reads, uh, our definition of crisis reflects its subjective nature as a construed threat. We speak of a crisis when the policymakers experience a serious threat to the basic structures or the fundamental values and norms of a system, which under time, pressure, and highly uncertain circumstances necessitates making vital decisions. There is no need to memorize each of these definitions, and to a certain extent, we all know what an emergency is. However, I believe it is helpful to point out some similarities among these definitions. Returning to the definitions, note that, the, that emergencies or crises are unexpected events that call for immediate action. In other words, no one saw it coming, but decisions must be made without delay. Likewise, this definition notes the time pressure 
the uncertain or unforeseen circumstance that necessitate you know what they call vital decision you see right there which under time pressure highly uncertain circumstances necessitates making vital decisions and so it is that being an emergency manager is about being prepared to make timely decisions in the face of unexpected threats of course we know that one does not simply walk into the emergency managers office and begin making timely decisions in the face of unexpected threats no emergency manager can succeed without skilled leadership leadership is essential to the role of an emergency manager and without it plans fail and for that matter decision making fails allow me to demonstrate what leadership at least as it relates to emergency managers uh, emergency management is not what it is not is what may be referred to as heroic leadership the heroic leader is responsible for the successful outcome of the crisis regardless of its severity it is the traditional all-american form of viewing leadership where subordinates to the leader look to their mythic or their heroic leader in anticipation of strong decisive guidance that will carry them to victory the heroic leader has the answers and is not afraid to put them to work. Hollywood does an excellent job of perpetuating the image. So allow me to demonstrate here. Consider for a moment a uh, current TV show, The Last Ship. Uh, the premise is that a pandemic has practically decimated the world, and the lone survivors are aboard this U.S. Navy battleship. Commanding the vessel is the veritable Captain Tom Chandler, among his more mundane responsibilities is actually captaining the enormous vessel and managing the crew. However, when it is necessary for a few people to board a virus-infested cruise ship, donning a full level A suit, who is better to lead that group than the captain himself? Perhaps a small contingent must make contact with possible survivors at Guantanamo Bay. Captain Chandler is your man. Maybe a small expeditionary force needs to set out on a small boat to retrieve some monkeys, naturally. Uh, Captain Chandler is certainly the best choice. Hopefully you get my point. The emergency manager is about being as prepared as possible to bring structure to chaos so that the consequences are reduced. They are not the break in case of emergency tool that is applied to solve the crisis and then tucked back away out of sight once it's resolved. As a caveat, uh, if you do have that hair and that jaw, you can certainly disregard everything I'm talking about. You are ready to lead. Uh, here's an appropriate quote regarding leadership in emergency management. It comes from an article written by Annie Pai. It says that real leadership is not about saving the day, but about influencing others about persuading and inducing other leaders or groups of people to progress, to move forward. That's what uh, she's getting at. Thus, leading is imbued with a notion of movement, of progress, of transition from one place to another, literally and metaphorically. A better example of leadership within emergency management would be, for instance, my friend, Sherry Gibbons. Hi, Sherry. She is the emergency management coordinator for the town of Gilbert in Arizona. Sherry's duties um, include developing an emergency operations plan and keeping that up to date. Um, she has to do that every, I think, three to five years. And here's a list of many of the things that she is responsible for doing. You can see she has to create and maintain the emergency operations plan. She has to maintain, uh, it's called a COOP, a continuity of operations plan. You've got facilitating work group, uh, emergency fuel supply plan, coordinates with parks and recreation about sheltering, hosts a tabletop exercise with the water department um, in case there's a, a contaminated water supply. So you can see all these various things that are going on. And the point is that any success that Sherry has enjoyed is because she works time and again to influence, persuade, and induce and induce others to, pro uh, to progress. Her job is to move the needle toward greater preparation and to facilitate success when the crises do roll in and set public safety leaders already in place up for success. Not to go in, save the day herself, and come out uh, 
you know, holding the victory banner that she has taken care of everything all by herself.